Hello, chart watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this Monday, March 23rd, 2020 Decision Point show with your hosts, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time, I do hope you'll come back uh, and watch our show on Monday. Uh, and, and easily to find the show if you go ahead and sign up for our free email list on decisionpoint.com you will always get the notification as soon as the Decision Point show has been posted. So check out our website, get on that free email list at decisionpoint.com and you'll always know right after we have uh, put our show up there for review. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with what's gonna happen with our agenda. And uh, first of all, let me say hello, dad. Um, it's, we might as well be living thousands of miles apart since <laughs> Right. you anymore <laughs> yes socially separated <laughs> yes we are that five minute drive no longer is worth anything so <laughs> it looks like we are starting to get a little sun though so that's a good thing but we've got a ton of uh stuff to cover today so let's go ahead and take a peek we're going to talk about something called deflationary depression uh, we follow a really great economist uh, called john malden and uh, he, he's uh, pretty much an expert on all of this. And he's certainly, um, I hate to say panic mode, but almost. So anyway, we will talk about uh, deflationary depression. We're gonna, of course, look at our bear market technical support right now, where we should be looking for the next area that we may turn around. Uh, we'll look at the earnings chart that we do and we're gonna cover the big four, dollar, oil, and gold. And then uh, we do wanna look at all of the sectors, but if we don't have time to look at all of them, we do have two sectors we wanna review because they are getting close to long-term trend model sell signals. Uh, our bonus, uh, we won't have any questions, unfortunately, because we aren't uh, recording live while we're all stuck in our homes. So uh, we won't have that bonus, but uh, when things settle down, we should hopefully be able to do so. All right, so here is a look at our decision point scoreboards right now and what we're looking at as far as signals go. Um, right now, I can tell you that the S&P 100 long-term trend model has executed a sell signal. I believe that came in, um, I think that came in on Friday, Thursday or Friday. So I will update those, uh, that scoreboard for you on stockcharts.com. And I'll have it in, of course, the DP alert that we'll publish tonight for our subscribers. Uh, NASDAQ is the one that's really held up the, the best so far in weathering this storm. It is still holding on to a long-term trend model um, buy signal, but it's, you know, it's, it's not going the right direction. In order to avoid it, we need to get price back up over the 200-day EMA. And we know that right now price is well below that uh, place. And uh, the final ones are these green signals that are showing up on the PMO in the long term. Those charts go final at the end of the month. Currently, I believe all four of these, um, well, these three that are showing uh, green, so far are um, gonna be a sell signal, I believe, at the end of the month. So uh, keep an eye on our scoreboards for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and dig right in. Um, Carl, do you want to start it off with uh, explaining to everyone what deflationary depression is? I will start. <laughs> okay, let me get on the right page here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty hairy out there, and I know I've been getting a lot of emails. Uh, one person said, you know, now everybody knows why you guys have been so bearish. <laughs> It's like, well, eventually it's going to do what we expect it to. I think the big no. surprise is going to be when we start getting bullish. Okay. Yeah, that's not likely to happen. Not for a while. But that's, so. what, that's what we look for, though, in a bear market are those reversal yeah. points. So. But talking about Malden, we've, I've followed him about 20 years. He's, a, he's an economist, but mainly he, he's it's not just your – in in the cloister economist he's he's he writes newsletters and uh has he has a great deal of involvement with everything if nobody follows him at this point i recommend that uh he's he's got a free newsletter at maldeneconomics.com and it's uh the, the one i'm thinking of is uh um, 
<laughs> from the front line. What is it? Oh yeah, thoughts from the front thoughts from the front line. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, this last one he came out with this weekend, and he he just totally he's he's a guy that believes that it, we we muddle through. Uh, we you know the market goes up, the market goes down, but generally with the economy and the market, we just muddle through and get there somehow. You know, it always comes out uh, positively. Uh, but he is just totally flipped in terms of what's going on on the coronavirus. And um, I, and it, it, he did, he, it surprised me that he, he came out so soon with it. But I've been thinking, I've been thinking this for quite some time. I've been watching the stuff that's going on in the economy and what the Fed's been doing. And I see things that should cause inflation, but it's not. The only inflation that, that there's more, I'm sure, but the only inflation I have noticed is in the housing market, which I harp on constantly. But in the uh, uh, in the the Great Recession that we had back in the the 2000s, um, that was a, a product of too much money into uh, too few homes and they just basically created a bubble and then it, the bubble broke and we had a, a bear market, a good about a 58% bear market. Um, uh, and now in order to fix that housing market and to make sure nobody felt any pain, they pumped it back up, they reinflated it, and we're just about the same place that we were back at the top in 2007. And uh, I, things are gonna go south pretty quick uh, in, in real estate, and that's a huge problem. You know, it's, if we had, the, the, uh, the feeling is that, especially from the politicians, that nobody, should be allowed to feel any pain. Nobody gets to pay for their uh, transgressions or their foolishness. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just like the dot-com bubble. Uh, well, people did suffer in that. They lost a lot in that. And uh, that was because there was no way to come in and help cover losses in the stock market. And there really still isn't any way to do that. Uh, but Let's look at what we're doing here. Uh, let me, one more thing on the, we're talking about deflationary depression. What that is, is that's good for people with assets and it's bad for people with debt. And an example would be with real estate. If you own a house and it's uh, completely paid off, well, uh, you're not in any threat if the market goes down. If, if, the, if the value of a house drops by half or more, it doesn't matter because it still translates. You can still buy the same house uh, without any, any problems. You can sell one you have and you can buy one just like it uh, if, if you wanted to, to turn over. Now, if you have that same house and you have the mortgage, and then when it sinks below you know, the, the value, uh, I'm sorry, the value sinks below the mortgage amount, then you're underwater. We've heard that tale many, many times. And that, that is, a, that is, that is a, a quick example of mm -hmm. uh, what the problems are we're gonna be facing. Is, is I, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or next year. I'm just saying things are set up. I don't. I think this looks as bad as any time since the Great Depression of uh, 1929 to 1932, the, uh, the, that bear market, the Great Depression lasted throughout the 30s. And uh, uh, I, I think that what, the, the way they're borrowing money now to try to keep every Friday from pain, uh, I hope it does some good, I hope it doesn't just knock down the, the castle, but it's uh, pretty scary to me. And uh, 
don't know if, if it's at a point where we can uh, save everybody from having pain. I, I doubt that it is. Mm -hmm. Looking at the, uh, we've, we've already passed this, ma this major support drawn across the bear market of uh, 2018 low. That was a cyclical bear market. Now, and it's now dropped below the secular ball market rising trend line. Uh, we're approaching the support drawn across the top of the consolidation of 2015 and 2016. <clears throat> and the, uh, so that, but anyway, that's the next support we're going to encounter. After that, it's below that consolidation area. And then below that is the top of the the two bear market, or I'm sorry, the two bull market tops back in the 2000s. And that is a major, that is a 53% uh, decline. It's certainly not out of the question when we're down what now, 33, 35% from the all time high. So this is easily within reach. And uh, don't think, I, don't, I wouldn't say we're gonna get there next week, although we easily could. <laughs> how fast, you know, Look how fast it's come, in, come down from here. Yeah, I mean, when I was on uh, Dave Keller's show, The Final Bar, I think it was um, not last week, maybe the week before. And he was, you know, I was showing him a chart similar to that. And I was saying, you know, look at 230, 235 on the SPY is really where we should be looking to that we're, we're going to go. Whether that'll be the stopping point or not, I don't know. And we still, that was still, I think, 15, 20% away at that level. And he was just like, oh, wow, well, that's bad news. We really don't want to hear that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just telling you to get prepared. So, and, and I said, I don't know when it'll do it, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it will get down to that level and test it. And he was like, well, let's hope not. And I'm like, well, here we are. <laughs> when I first set up this chart, I, I didn't even think about drawing this this line, and, uh, and when I did, I draw it. I thought, "Oh my God, people yeah. are <laughs> think that's I'm crazy." But uh, you know, it's to me now the way the way things are going, absolutely possible. The uh, the the bear market of twenty nine thirty two was uh, a market decline eighty nine percent. So this is this is easily something we should be looking at. I'm not saying that's where it's going. It's just that that's uh, when it gets down this far, we've really, you know, we could start looking for a bottom, I think. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, as Dave said, let's hope that we don't get, I'll say what he did. Let's hope we don't have to go down there. That's really depressing to think about, but it's not a matter of, you know, depressing or whatever. It's preparation. Right. You know, haven't gotten prepared. Really prepared. Don't think it's impossible. It's not. Right. This this chart uh, I played around with some, uh, but notice that it's uh, the market is back in uh, inside the bands here, but these bands at this point are pretty much worthless. Um, I I, th I know we're, we're not going to see where they're going to go. They're going down. I remember this, <clears throat> these bands show where the S&P 500 would be if it was overvalued, fair value, or undervalued. And uh, we're, they're based right now on uh, the uh, third quarter of 2019. Uh, the fourth quarter 2019 should be, will be finishing up uh, this month just a week or two away before we get the final numbers. Uh, and we won't see many, we won't see any adjustments in this uh, at this point. But uh, <clears throat> we'll have to wait until another month, say April, maybe first part of May, if, when probably 60% of the earnings for the first quarter of this year come in. And when we get those, they'll be estimates for fourth quarter 2020 and that's where we're going to see these 
these really bands drop like rocks. Uh, um, here's, I, I never thought I would see this again, but we're liable to see something like this where everything uh, drops uh, right through the, just through the bottom. And that was because they had a loss in 20, uh, in the fourth quarter uh, of $23.25 uh, for the, the S&P 500. And, you know, then that goes in mixed in with the, the other three quarters of that year. And the problem, uh, lost my train here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we might see those dip very quickly down to the downside. Does that really change the idea that they're fair valued or overvalued? If that overvalue line down falls? here, it's this is crazy. It's gonna, it's you know, it's not really much you can you can do at that point uh, in terms of that they're all together mm -hmm. way down here. So. No, this these are meaningless at this when they're down here. This, but this is this is normal movement, and but we're going to see them drop. And I, as far as where they might drop to, that's what I did here. I drew these uh, horizontal lines across the um, this top, and I'm just kind of guessing at where what uh, where that might be. I'm just saying that looks a good target for that could get your overvalued down to 2100 okay. okay and the fair value i'm drawing across there um that get that down into uh, uh 1500s okay and then this and with here this is the for under i'm sorry, yeah undervalued uh, that's uh, 800 okay so i'm not saying that's where the market will go notice it never really got anything much lower than fair value, fair value in, in this uh, decline. But if we're going to have, you know, a, a, a much greater than 60% uh, decline, yeah, it's going to, it's going to get into this area. So something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, do you want me to do the four now? Uh, let me go ahead and look at just some of those broad market charts that I had okay. um, together. So I'm going to go ahead and steal it real quickly. And the one I want to look at is just, it's just a list, you know, I just list all of the, the different broad market um, uh, ETFs. So the SPY, and then we also look at that equal weight. So that's, you know, not cap weighted. So we get a kind of an even um, price move based on all of the elements rather than, you know, making some more important than others. Uh, S&P 400, 600 Dow and NASDAQ. And, you know, really you can see that it's been, you know, difficult on all of the markets. It's especially difficult right now on those mid caps and small caps. Although I did notice they didn't uh, move quite as far down today. Uh, we were talking though before the show about well what's what's the deal with the you know the Nasdaq why didn't it go down as far and um, you can see that it hasn't even tested its 2018 low and really just from what I've uh, been gathering from from my peers and uh, from the news etc is that what's happening is when people go to look for those bargains to buy they tend to go into the tech sector because when we do get the reversal generally the tech sector leads the way, moves up faster as far as percentages. And so people are trying to get their bargains, but they're, they're concentrating on that tech space. And so it hasn't quite, um, you know, been as, hasn't been hurt quite as much. So, well, it'll be interesting to see if that continues as people buy bargains and then those aren't bargains because they keep going lower. And then the last one I wanted to show is our global markets chart. And this one just get, gives you an idea that the pain is pretty much being um, shared by everybody. Um, Germany, we're seeing Germany and the UK actually getting hit the hardest of all of these. Shanghai doesn't look that bad, um, but I'm going off of a top here at the beginning of 2018, and that wasn't actually their all-time high. So, you know, they were already beat down. And so that's why at this point, it's just been mostly consolidation sideways. 
All right, so big four. I'm gonna let you look at uh, the DPA charts. And I, I will be uh, posting and uh, talking about all of these as well today in the DP alert for our subscribers. Okay. All right, going to the four. I've got uh, the dollar has been really screwy in the last uh, couple of weeks. And I wondered if this was an anomaly associated with the ETF. But then if you look at the, the dollar index, you can see the, the wide swing it made. So that's coming from the dollar index and uh, uh, that's what we get. Yeah, it's really fascinating to see that kind of volatility. We just don't usually see that. No, no, and, and I, I'm not, no, no, excuse me, I don't know what to make of it, to tell you the truth, because I'm not, uh, I don't have much fundamental uh, information about these, uh, the four, I just follow the charts. Um, okay, oil is, this is encouraging the, uh, this cluster is finding some support in here. Um, the I I brought this chart up. WTIC. Uh, I started carrying this, and because it's got major support areas here, you can see we've gone through this one, and. Uh, Seventeen dollars is the next one. All right, and then the hesitation we're seeing on the daily chart, so I say, is encouraging. Mm -hmm. Okay, gold behaving very nicely now. All of a sudden, <laughs> got us into neutral uh, up here, but at, at this rate, it could be back on a buy signal mm -hmm. by the end of this week. It's possible. The BMOs turned up. And mm -hmm. uh, don't remember if I mentioned it to our listeners or our viewers. Uh, I used to carry, well, see, this is, yeah, this is wrong. <laughs> you still have the old one. Uh, never mind, I'll talk about it next time. <laughs> okay. I, I know what the problem is. Yeah, at this point, though, what that information is telling us is that you know, they're inverse right now. So if the dollar goes up, we're supposed to expect uh, gold to go down. Right, here's the proper chart. I changed it from correlation with the dollar to correlation with stocks. Much more easy to understand. And uh, when it's up above the zero line, it means that they're correlated. And when it's below, they're not correlated. Anyway, you, you get some idea how it, it whips around and it doesn't, it's not a steady correlation by any means. Right, and this is not relative strength, guys. This is a correlation, so that is different. Right, and then uh, treasuries that are coming back. We had a, a parabolic up move and it broke down as we always expected to do and then uh, now it's charging up again. I'm not, don't have a prediction. I just, uh, uh, it's probably going to be chopping around in this manner for, for some time. Yeah, and that's, you know, we got down to that 200 day and the ba basing pattern. And, you know, now you're right. We can see a lot of chop there. Okay, and this, I'll tell you, turn it back to you after this one. But uh, again, we have, uh, the horrible picture when you were just starting in trying to save the world, keep everybody from having pain. We have nowhere to go with interest rates. They're already, well, we have. We can go to, to below zero. We can go to negative interest rate. But see, when we're starting something like we're starting now, we should not be beaten down into this hole uh, simply because we wanted to save pain in the 2000s from uh, people losing money on real estate. Yeah. 
And that's, so it, you know, it's like, you know, a running back in football and he gets an injured knee and he can, they just pump him through a pain killer so he can go out there and keep running. And he's, he's chewing up the knee in that, in that process. So it's not, you know, it's temporary relief, but it's in the long run, it's a horrible idea. Right. Yeah. Oh, just the mention of football makes me depressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I scarcely miss it. You know, I do the, uh, the, yeah, let's the, look at some sectors. I've got uh, okay. charts here. Okay. Um, oh, you got it. You can get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, just uh, make sure I cover everything. We've got two sectors that are about ready to go on uh, uh, Death Cross. Um, yeah. moves and uh, that's one of them is, is super staples and uh, this is close enough you see it's it's just two tenths of two two one hundredths uh, above the uh, yeah for a crossover yeah it, it'll and, happen tomorrow <laughs> and, yeah it, it, this one will sure happen tomorrow unless we get a huge rally it brings it back up above those moving averages. So I think you could safely call it as a sell signal today. Yeah. And the other one was uh, healthcare. It's getting very close. This may take two more days to do the job. Um, you should remember that the longer term moving averages, they move more slowly and uh, the crossover like this will take longer than what you're used to seeing with the 2050 crossover. Yep, exactly. And then I think utilities is also one that we're getting, um, it's not quite as close, but it's one of the other loan long-term trend model buy signals. You're that right, yes, yeah, that's, that was, uh, um, I'm getting no help down here in terms of the yeah. crossovers. Well, and this is, you know, I think a great indication, you know, when you're in a bull market, you can have overbought conditions for a while. And guess what? We're in a bear market now. And so we could see these low numbers continue across. We could stay oversold with zero people showing, you know, their stocks above the 20, 50. We could just continue that path for a while. So don't think just because we're in those oversold territory that, you know, you're safe. Yeah, this is a, a finite uh, range and when it gets down here that that's just like it's on zero now both of these are on zero 20 and 50 Utilities, uh -huh. when they when they get at that point uh, that means they're all um, uh, bearish in that regard mm -hmm. and uh, they can keep the, the price can keep going down but those are not going to change until chase prices turn around and we start getting you know plus sides on the upside. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, uh, looks like we're about ready to uh, close it down um, for today. I do hope uh, you all enjoyed our decision point show today. Um, I will be writing in the DP alert about a lot of the charts that we just looked at and um, hope, you'll, hope you'll subscribe. And in any case, go to decisionpoint.com and do sign up for that free newsletter. Uh, you will get notified when we do have our free material published. All right, everybody have a great uh, day, hopefully rest of the week, and happy trading.